Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewn by Claire and today we're going to be making Hamish the Highland Cow's head. Now, Hamish, Hamish the Highlander, Hamish the Highland Cow, whichever you want to say. Um, and it's this character just here. Okay, and his lovely kilt and his thespian shirt, which I have got the kit for, so that'll be a separate video. But for today, we're just going to concentrate on his head and then in a separate video, I'll do his body and his legs because you've got these little fluffy bits at the bottom here for his arms and his legs. So we'll talk about how to do those. Um, I have um, the patterns in the book. So this is in Luna Lapin and Friends book, which I think is book four. I think, don't quote me on that. I think that's book four. Um, and I also purchased a remake kit as well from Cool Crafting, which is the home of Sarah Peel. Now, Sarah Peel is the designer of all of these Luna Lapping characters. Oops. And she, um, her company, Cool Crafting, which are based in Kendall in um, Cumbria, they um, provide all kit, the kits, they sell kits and everything you could ever possibly want for Luna Lapping. So I'll pop the web address up here for you and I would suggest that if you do want anything kit-wise, if you're not using felt or fur from your stash, then, then you look at getting a kit. It, I have done a separate um, kit opening video for this um, one so that you can have a look and see what's included in there should you wish to, to buy that. The only other thing is that I'm going to machine sew the majority of my character and that's slightly different to the instructions. So there's a couple of things that I've done differently um, or will be doing differently as well so that I can share those with you so that if you prefer to machine sew yours then you can do. Most of the instructions are going to be pretty much the same um, I, I believe and we'll talk about that as we go through but for all intents and purposes this one is a machine sewn um, Hamish as far as I can I can manage it and it's the first time I've made Hamish so we're going to learn together and we'll do it together and we'll see how we get on so I hope you enjoy this little video. So first of all you need to have a look in your book and find the pattern pages and then we need to find the pages that to do with um, with Hamish. Now some of the body parts are for multiple characters and that'll say it in the middle. The other thing that I've found is that a couple of times I've gone back and had to look for other um, pieces that I've missed. So do be careful before you start cutting out, make sure that you work your way through the character and make sure you've got all of the bits because there isn't anywhere where you've got a full list of what you need. Um, I mean, I'm going to help you with this now as I can do, but we'll see what we can do. So on, pay, on this page here, we've got the foot pad. So I've cut copied and traced that off. Now the foot pad is a classic example of what we can do with the pattern because if you look this one has got a sewing line around the outside of it uh, or on the in, just slightly on the inside of it and that indicates that this part will be sewn from the inside and then turned through. So on this part I haven't added any extra seam allowance for machine sewing this character. However, when we move on, I will show you the, the difference and show you that we have. So then also on the side body that we've got here, again, we've got that dotted line. And I know from the instructions, because I've been and had a look at the instructions, we actually sew that from the inside and turn it through. So both the tummy and the side body, I haven't added any extra seam allowance to. However, this little bit that I missed, so we're going to trace this in a section, which is the, um, oh, that's not a lion's head, not that one. Hold on one second. So here we've got Hamish's hand. So Hamish's hand hasn't got any um, dotted line around the outside like this one has. So therefore, what I've done with that one is that I have gone ahead and added quarter of an inch onto all the edges of that one in order to make that ready for machine sewing. The same um, with Hamish's tail tuft. I haven't added um, seam allowance to that one because I um, believe that we're going to hand sew that on at the end. With all of that fluff, I think it'll be easier to hand sew that one on. Again, with the leg, there's no seam allowance around that one because there's no dotted line on that. So I have gone ahead and added it. Um, and I'm going to just do now um, his head because I've actually missed his head, which is here. And so I'm going to do that one with you so you can just see what, what it is that I do and how I do that to add that seam allowance onto there. It's it's not an exact science. So, you know, you, you need to be aware that sometimes you might need to trim a little bit or not. And we'll talk about that as we're doing it. So I'm going to copy all the existing um, 
markings on there and because there's a seam allowance down here I won't add any onto the bottom just down here but I will onto the sides all the way around here because I believe that we'll be will be machine sewing that and that'll need to fit but as I say we'll talk about it as we go through and adjust it because it is designed to be hand sewn and we are changing things by machine sewing as much as possible okay let me get my tracing paper and we'll have a go at doing this Using, I use just ordinary tracing paper. You can use greaseproof paper as well, or there's other um, tracing papers you can buy online, like Swedish tracing paper and that type of thing for dressmaking. But just ordinary from an arts and crafts shop, um, tracing paper works really good, work really well for me. All I do then is I take a pen and I just, I can see the lines through. So I just go round and just draw on the lines exactly as the pattern is shown in the book. If there's any long straight lines, then I will use a ruler to draw those or, or I will true them up at the end. I try and stay as careful as I can, but when you're actually cutting this out, you can just obviously neaten those edges up as, as you need to. You just want to make sure you don't take off anything that you need to. So we've got a seam allowance across there. We've got an eye position just there. We've got a cut there for his ears and horns and then a a dot at the bottom as well so we're just going to write on this as well what it is a hamish side head and then that's it with the book we're finished with the book for our pattern piece now so that's all nicely traced on there so let me just pop that out of the way i'm just working on my wall map but it's that's not that's just because it's there not because you need to what i do then is i use my seam gauge here and i find the quarter of an inch mark which for me is there so let's just mark that with the orange slider so this is the amount that we're adding to enable us to be able to machine sew this character and all i do then is go to the bottom or starting point and i just do a little dash where the seam allowance should be and then i just move it up and follow the line so my ruler is always at a right angle so let me just move that slide out of the way because it doesn't stay put for me my ruler is always at a right angle to the pattern piece to the line that i'm tracing on the pattern piece and i'll pick this up and show you in a second so i end up with a series of little dashes like this hopefully you can see that i'm just put that behind and hopefully that will help it make it a little bit less opaque Okay, so you've got this little line there. All I do then is I just, using my pen, just join those little dashes together and that gives me the new line that I'm going to be drawing. I then change direction and go on to the next piece and just do exactly the same, just mark those lines up and then I can then join those across the top there. And then I start again on the next piece. So you get the idea. You're just, just following those lines around, moving your ruler or your tape measure around and marking from the line, original line, to your quarter of an inch. And then when you've got so far along, you can just join those in and that should mirror or mimic the, um, the lines that you need on your pattern and it adds those pattern pieces on. So here's one that I've done in black, which might be easier for you to see. So my original line is here and I've got my marks on here that I've um, copied that, um, ignore that mark, I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. Um, and then um, I've added on this quarter of an inch and that's where I cut it out as so that's one of Hamish's legs. So that's what you need to do. Identify all of your pieces and then we'll just go round and we'll just mark up that quarter of an inch all the way round. Cut out your pattern so that you're ready to go. Now I did cut these out on the lines because we need to get an exact fit of this fabric. It's going to be tight so we need to make sure that we've got all of those um, lines perfectly measured and that we're not going to be wasting any, any felt because it's you're not going to have a lot to waste and we need to make sure that this is all going to fit on. The other thing is that I have done is that I have ironed my felt. So here's one piece ready to go for things being um, put on. So I've ironed my felt as well so that any shrinkage is out of that. I've got both of them there. The other thing that I do as well when I'm cutting this out to take the guesswork out of it is that when I have a part like the leg where we need to cut four, then I actually make four pattern pieces which might seem like a lot of work to do but believe me it actually it makes it much easier because you're far more confident that everything's going to fit on so this is why i say you need to make sure you've got all of your pattern pieces the other thing that i'll be doing in a second is pinning this on and that will be the moment of truth as to whether adding the seam allowance on has used up 
too much of the spare fabric that we've got because again we're adding this much onto each piece so you can imagine onto all of those four pieces before we then we do the arms and etc it adds quite a lot of felt that you're going to be using onto the character that you're making so we'll we'll have a moment of truth in a bit where we realize whether we can fit everything on i could before i ironed my fabric um, and i've just lost about half a centimeter in the width of it on the um brown colored felt so yeah just bear that in mind and again with this head i'm actually going to cut out two of these heads i do a mirror copied of them so i'll fold it over like this when i cut it out so that'll give me two because we actually need to cut two of his head because he's got two sides to his head and that will give me my two um mirrored pattern pieces then that i can pop on to my felt because i try to use the same side of my felt whenever i'm cutting out so that that there's no difference in in the nap or in the way that the felt looks sometimes it looks the same i wonder if you can see on this one so that's one so on this one i would use this side because that side looks a little flatter to me and that side looks like it's got a little bit more character to it so again you might not be able to see the difference from where you are but for me there is a difference that's why i'm cutting all of mine out on the single again which is why i've cut out all my pattern pieces so let me just cut out the head and then we'll get laying everything out the first thing I'm going to cut out, I think, is going to be the faux fur because we just need these couple of pieces out of it. We just need the end of his tail and we need his top knot, which goes on his head. Now, the one thing that I can show on this as well is that sometimes it helps to add extra information onto your pattern. So on this pattern piece here for the top knot, let me just find it in the book for you. Actually, that might probably be easier, won't it? Let's see my pattern piece. Give me just two seconds. just got to find it right okay so on this pattern piece here which is the top knot let's move the camera slightly so you can see it we've got an arrow which shows us the direction of the pile of the fur and that's been copied onto my onto my pattern piece so i know which way that's always going to be but then the the pattern says front of head and back of head now on dressmaking the front is always denoted with a one notch and the back is always denoted with two notches so on my actual pattern piece here i've actually put a little bit of two notches there and one notch there so i can just do the very minuscule list of little snips into there and it'll always tell me where whether it's the back or the front likewise on the leg for hamish as well here We've got a, something that says the front of leg here as well. So again, I've done the same thing on my pattern piece. You might have noticed it. I've actually added two little notches, one for the front, and then I've added two for the back. So when I cut this out, just on the seam line, I'll just make a couple of millimetres just into that seam allowance, but it'll always remind me which is the front and which is the back, and that's what I'll use. The arms are the same, so you don't need it, but just wanted to just mention that that's what I have done. Now, the way to cut out faux fur, so I'm told, I've got these pieces pinned on here. I've got my direction of my fur correct because I've got two arrows that tell me the direction that the fur needs to lay from top to bottom. Is to then use some either sharp scissors, I've also got my snips here, we'll just cut out this square one here. And what you need to do is you need to just part along the mesh, so you've got a mesh top and you've got your fluff, haven't you? Beautiful fluff for Hamish, really love this. And what we're going to do is just use the scissors and we're going to part through the fur. So it's a bit being a bit like a comb. So I'm just going backwards and forwards just to part away through the fur. And then I'm going to do a little snip. So you're trying not to knock off. See how the fur lies over the edge of the hem? We want to not cut through that fur. We want to leave that all intact. But just by using the edge of our scissors, or in this case, I'm using my snips because they're probably the one of the sharpest I've got, then I've cut through that. But if you look, when we part that, there's no fur dropping on my work surface. So I've not just gone gung-ho and just gone whack with my scissors. You've actually just taken the time to do that carefully and then that just leaves all of the fur intact for you to, to manipulate later. So let's just do that again. So I'm just using the side of my edge, blades of my scissors and I'm just going backwards and forwards just a little bit in through so it's just parting and then i'll snip 
I mean, if you sh if this is a sharp enough, you probably don't need to do the little backwards and forwards bit the time doing. You can just follow that line. And again, that fur will part and all of the strands are intact and it's just leaving the um, just the mesh that's been cut. Likewise, when we go across here, I'm going to do the same thing again. So little, little, little pushing through, but very close. I'm not going all the way through, so keeping my, my blades very close to the faux fur. Not true to the faux fur, to the, to the mesh. And just very carefully, because we don't want to cut off any strands. We want to keep all of that lovely fluffiness, don't we, intact. So just these bits do just need a little bit more care and attention when you're cutting them out. And there'll be tutorials on YouTube. If I'm not explaining it properly, there'll be other YouTube tutorials that you can follow that will tell you how to cut that out. Okay, so let's take that piece away so we can see there, look, we've cut that through. All of this here is all left intact. So that's what we want. And then here's his little tail with all of those long tufty bits of fur all intact. And we've just taken out that top bit and there'll be a way to sew this so that that sews and, and preserves all of this for it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead now and do exactly the same technique to cut out his top knot and you, and get that cut out. And then we'll come back when, we, when we're pinning out the tan fabric and then we'll pin out and cut out the um, brown fabric. Okay, so the next piece then is I've got all of the pieces that need to fit onto this tan. We've got four boots, if you like, all with a quarter inch added to them. One, two, three, four. And I've actually marked these up. So if you look, when I lay these down, I have got two pointing this way and two pointing the other way. So that when these are put together, when they're cut on the single, they will be a pair. So that's what is called mirroring your pattern pieces. If I cut out all four this way, then I'd have to turn some over in order to make the mirror copy and I'd be using the other the other side. So this is why we, when we're cutting out on the single, we have these, as we call them, mirror copies. So I'm going to take these right up to the edges now because I can see where my sewing lines are going to be. And I'm just going to, for now, just put a couple of pins in just to hold them into place so that I can then see how much fabric we've got and I'm putting these right up to each other so that when I cut between these two boots here I only cut one line through the top because we don't need to don't want to waste any of the felt we can we can be that close to each other with these pieces so after quite a bit of a game of Tetris with this um, pattern pieces this is the best layout I think that I've managed to achieve um, with the layout of the fabric on the um, with the layout of the pattern on the fabric that I've got. Um, and this has got most of the pieces on. What it doesn't give me is enough here, I don't think, to be able to sew the horn patterns on there. Because for that, you need a piece that is... Um, let me just have a look see how I'm lot, lot longer than wide these horns are. So if I put this on my cutting mat, I can see I need a piece that's three by two to be able to cut one out. And then if I move it across slightly, because you need to have a little quarter of an inch seam allowance over there, I'm going to need to have a three by three piece of felt, but then in half. So I'm going to need to have a six by three piece of felt to be able to cut these out. And I'll show you why we're going to do that in, in, in a minute. But what I have found in my stash is this fabric here, which is very similar and on a similar palette. And it's not going to affect me in thinking and or spoil it for me if Hamish's horns are in this colour and the rest of his feet and his hands and his nose are in this colour. So I'm going to do that. If, you, if you're if you ordering from Cool Crafting, I would suggest you order a, a, another small piece of this brown, um, this tan coloured um, felt. It'll tell you which, which colour it is in the kit. Um, or on, online when you're ordering the kit for, for Hamish. And I would just order another piece of, of felt for that, to do that if you want to have yours the same. But if I just show you with this one here, what we can do is I can pop one horn there and sew round it, and then pop the other horn on and sew round it. And I've got enough here, depending on which way round I do it, that I can have two pieces that I fold in half because that's the way Sarah says, she says it's better to machine sew the horns onto a larger piece, just draw around your template, stitch on the line, 
and then you can then trim it off the excess. We're going to do that in a minute. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have those two pieces like that, and I can do my horns on there. Be and and this is own. This isn't a criticism of the kit. Don't forget what we are doing is in my case what I'm doing is I've added on this quarter of an inch and what's happened is a quarter of an inch on all of these pieces apart from the foot pad and the muzzle has eaten into the spare fabric that Sarah had left in order to make the horns out the say out of the same fabric so that's the reason why I'm going to go off and I'm going to cut out the rest of these pieces now now that they're all um pin down I might just move one or two because I scrunched them right up together in order to try and get everything on but it still didn't work for me so that's just 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 to let you know in that disclaimer that you will need some extra for sewing your horns okay so I've cut out all of my pieces here this is all that I've got left so just a few little bits and that isn't big enough to do the horns as I thought it wasn't so what I've done is I've got these pieces of fabric here. So what I've done is I've just pinned the horn stitching guide on because then what we, and don't cut these out because that's a stitching guide, not a pattern piece. And then what we'll do is we will then stitch around the edge of here. We can either um, mark it with a, um, a pen or we can just very carefully sort of by moving around these um, pins we can very carefully stitch it whilst it's in place so that's what I think I'll end up doing but you'll need two pieces like that because each horn has to be um, double with thickness because you do stuff those slightly in order for them to be rigid so I've got my piece there and a piece there so I'm going to keep those two pieces together with a pin and then when we start stitching that we'll have those ready to do. Now, the other thing to say is that you may have noticed that I'm cutting out the whole of the character at this stage, and I would recommend you do the same. I wouldn't recommend that you cut out just the head pieces because sometimes you need to have an idea of the complete orientation of the layout of the fabric before you start cutting just to make sure everything's right and you're not being too generous with it or wasting any because so for example you might need some very long pieces like this and then you need to be able to cut those out um you know in one piece you don't want to join halfway down here because you've run out of felt so that's why i'm cutting everything out for the whole um, body and head at this stage but then we'll go on to sew the, the head and then the body will be in a, a different video so for now I'm just going to put these things to one side and then we're going to be working on the rest of the felt so I will just take my time in working out my Tetris this has been um, ironed already and again I can see a side that I would prefer to use than the other so I'm going to use that side for mine for my top piece got some th few threads on it I think that looks the nicest so just take a few moments just to make sure if you can't decide it doesn't matter so much but just try and keep all your pieces from the you know the right the right side as being the right side on all of your pieces so let me just get stitched on this and I'll come back and show you when I've finished okay so it is pretty tight on the felt so I've got three legs here at the bottom and then three ears just here I know there's four of each don't worry we'll find the rest in the minute there's the fourth leg and three of the arms all coming down here, but these have to stagger because of the way the arm is. And then I've slotted the other arm in just there, as well as the tummy, a side body here. We've got the gusset for the head going down there because that's quite a long piece. I've got the other side body there, the two head pieces with the noses um, together, and then I've got the tail along here. And then I've just finally peeked that little ear in there as well. So there's not going to be a lot spare on here. And don't forget, this isn't a criticism of the kit. The kit, as I'm showing here, if you cut all of the pattern pieces out on the hand sewing line, would be absolutely more than enough to get um, your pieces out and you'd have spare left over. It's just that with me wanting to machine sew on all of the body parts, then I'm, I've added that extra seam allowance in. So all I did was just pop the pieces on, just roughly, just to get them sort of um, orientated and make sure that it would all fit. And then I went back in and then added the extra pins that will allow me to, to cut this out. See how many things, there's a lot of parts to this. So I'm gonna keep all, cut this out now and keep all of the pattern pieces onto the actual individual piece of felt. And don't forget this has been cut out singularly and generally you can get um, much more cut out if you do it singly just because of the nature of, of how you um, can fit everything in together on your fabric. 
Okay, I'm going to go and cut this out and then we'll talk about the next stage, which will be marking notches and tailor's tags. Okay, so I've just finished cutting out all of these pieces now. I just want to go through and mark the notches. So we've got a notch at the bottom of the tummy. So I'm going to mark that just with a little snip, just with the nose of my um, snips here, <laughs> or your scissors. Um, it just goes round just within the seam allowance. So we're not trying to cut through the seam allowance. I'm just going to snip on the edge of the body here on the dark legs because we'll do a tailor's tack to mark the centre of the, the dart leg and the centre of the dart, yes. And then um, another one on the edge there. And as you can see, you, can, you don't have to go very, very deep and you can see that mark there. So literally just work through all of these um, pattern pieces and just... Oh, just, just interestingly enough, on here, when we drew the extra fabric on, what I did was just take the dot, the top of the dart and then just follow the same line on the edge of the, um, on the edge of the drawn line there and then extended it just further down. So it has gone wider, but that's fine because when we get narrow to the edge, it will just sit in there. So that's that marked. One side, let's do the other side. So I'll just go through and mark all of my notches first, none on the ears, none on the ar oh no, on the arms. I will just mark a notch just at the side where the dotted line is. Because I think that might help us just locate that when we use it when we need to do that later. But it might not be necessary as i say i've not made this character before the other thing that i thought about as well while i was just eating my lunch um was that if this doing it this way is how you would do it if you were making it in fabric as well so if you've not got felt this is how you would would do it in um fabric now again on the legs i added in the notches so i'm going to put two little notches on this side of the leg and one little notch on that side of the leg and it will tell me which way round those all are going to be. So I am adding a few little extra notches just as clues so that when we're actually sewing this together it just gives us those, those reference points for joining it all together. So yeah, that's just nearly finished. And then we will move on to Taylor's Tacks just because they're really good at marking things through all of the fabric. Have I done that one? Yeah, done that one. Let's do this one here. And just remember not to go all the way through into your seam allowance. You just do a little nick just so you can just see it as you're working with it. Nothing on the tail. Nothing on the top. Oh, there is, I've marked the notches on the top notch already on the fur. Ears have nothing, so that's the four legs done. And I will start and separate out now my pattern pieces for the different areas. And staying organised is going to be crucial for this, this actual character because there are just so many pieces. So we need his head. We don't need the body pieces, so I can keep those to one side. But we do need to put some tailor's tacks on there. None on the arm, oh, there is on the arms and the legs. Okay. <clears throat> right. I think I know where I am. So I'm using a contrast thread. I'm gonna use this bright pink. I'm gonna take off quite a long section because we're gonna be working with this. We need a needle as well, just to be able to get this organized. And I'm just going to sing, thread it with a single length of my thread. Oh, I might have do my glasses on, couldn't I? So that's put the two ends of your thread together. So you've just got it double, but you don't need a knot at the end. Just leave that loose. Let's start with the eye because we're going to go through double on this one because I've only marked it on one side. So with the eye, I've just put the two pattern pieces together. You can just do this singly if you wanted to. And I'm going to go in and across the dot for the eye. We can't sew this on yet because we need to sew the seam and the, the um, dot would get in, the um, bead would get in the way. So I've left a nice long tail here, probably about two, two and a half inches. And then I'm going to go in the other side of my um, dot now. So we've gone north to south and east to west on that dot. And you're gonna pull it through so that you've got a loop that's about the same length as your tail. Makes it nice and easy to work with. And then when you finish, you just snip off your threads. 
oops and once you snipped off your threads you then just snip through the loop so you've got all of those tufty bits of, of thread because then what we do is we separate these two pieces of fabric apart so that we've got a bridge of threads like this and then we just snip through the bridge of threads and what that has done now is it even though we've not got the marking on this side it's marked that eye position onto both pieces of our fabric for us and these tufts here shouldn't pull out when we're working with them hopefully we'll remember to try and leave those in and then that'll be ready for them for working you can see them on the wrong side on the on the right side of the felt there okay so that's one tailor's tack done so i'm going to now go ahead and do a tailor's tack on the top of the darts on the head gusset because that will give us a stop point i presume for sewing but because it's only through one one thickness of felt we don't need to leave too much of a tail so i'm only probably leaving about three quarters of an inch on that one doesn't matter so much but you can just see they really give a nice little mark for you without the risk of permanently marking your felt you can use a um an erasable heat erasable pen but i've heard that they can marks can come back again in the cold so somewhere like this where you can see what's going on then you don't want to mark it so that's for the head that's for the head I'm going to mark on the body at these darts here, just at the top here, so that we know where we're going to stop sewing for each of the darts. As I say, you get really quick at doing these once you've done them. The longest time is, is re-threading your, your, your um, needle and thread. The other place that I'm going to put the mark for the darts is through the legs here, at the top of the, like the, the hand bone, if you like, of, of the darts. There's a cross on each of those. And also at the top of the arms, there's a cross there. And I'm going to put a tailor's tack in each of those as well. So we've got that for reference too. Um, but I think that's it. Um, so I'll carry on and do those. You don't need to watch me. You've seen me do countless numbers of these. And if not, then have a look on my video about tailor's tacks. Because in my skill builder series, because that will be there and available for you to watch. And we'll go into it in more detail. And I, try, I do try not to make these... Um, videos too long but I try to capture all the information I think you need so where I'm repeating myself I'm trying to refer you back to the other videos okay I'll just get this done and then we'll be then talking and separate out all of my head pieces from the rest of the um, body pieces and then I'll put the body pieces in a little bag to keep them all safe and together and away from if you've got pets or little or children at home then piece of pattern pieces as you know can go missing so and being as we know we've not got any more felt to play around with, then we need to keep this all together, don't we? Okay, I'll get on and do that. Just to say, on the muzzle piece, we have got um, some areas where we sort of need to make markings on here. But I'm going to do something called thread tracing. Now, there is a video on my channel about this already. But basically, you do a running stitch, just a small running stitch, along the line that you want to capture. Or the line you want to mark, I suppose, like this. Just trying to work out where I want it to end because I want to end with a stitch right on that very point, so that tells me where I'm going to. And then what you do is you just, if you hold on to your ends, you can just lift up with your needle the threads, the stitches that you've done, and then just each one just to make it so that you can then just snip through it like that so they're like little loopy stitches and we can do the same going along here now so you just leave a little little loop on each of your stitches and then what we do is we cut through the loop and when we take the pattern piece off it will have marked where those stitches are for us so I'm going to do that on these darts so then we just snip through so that's what it looks like before I've snipped through I'm just going to snip through those loops. Again, these little steps just take a little bit longer, but I do think they help. So if you can get into the habit of doing them, then I think it'd be better off. I'm going to take the thread off just there. If I just ease that corner away, you'll be able to see how you can, well, you can see from the other side, look how you can see it. But you can just see very clearly how or where you're supposed to stitch along so depending on how this comes together 
because I've not made it yet, um, then that will then give us those lines for reference for matching up. That's how it looks just to show you so you can see how that's marked. So I'll do the other side as well. And then with these um, muzzle bits, I'm going to actually take the pin out. So I'll take that pin out and put it on this side again, just so it's tied in. But I'll just fold back on that fold line on the pattern. And then I'll just do a quick running stitch along here just to mark it. And then I'll, without cutting the loops, and then I'll just fold it back again like that. Oops. And then I'll just do it, use that the edge of that paper pattern then just to do another row of running stitches. And that will just show me where those lines were on the pattern because they're reference lines that we're going to need. So I've just folded on the first line of the pattern. Fold that up. You can put a pin in if you want to just to hold it still for you. Just make sure it's started and ended in the right place. And then I'll just do a stitch there just double back on that stitch so it'll just hold it in place for us instead of doing a knot and then I'm just doing a running stitch along there just a flat one not a it's not supposed to be a loopy one that's better and that will just then mark that fold I presume it's a fold line just to the edge there just leave a bit of a tail and this bit, actually, I haven't added any um, seam allowance onto it, the muzzle at all. I've left that as the original size because I think that we will need to, because once it's the head's constructed, we will need to hand sew that on. So there is a little bit of hand sewing. We just can't avoid it. We've, we've got to have some hand sewing on here just because of the extra details that there are at this moment in time. But like when I did um, Clementine, I worked out a way I'd be able to do that out of fabric as well then I think hopefully we might be able to do the same with this so yeah just a little running stitch and you'll see that when I oops needles flying around when I take this off you'll see exactly where all those lines are okay so let's put my needle back in my needle book take the pin out and there we can see We've got our lines here marked by the fluffy bits of thread and then we've got those fold lines marked there as well. Quite clearly and, and marked the pattern. Okay, and I didn't snip into these because this is going to be hand stitched on and I didn't want to risk marking the, the um, lines on those and it being in the wrong, wrong place. So I'm going to put one pin in the middle of this now to hold that together as I said before just so that we've got that together so we know where we are and then I'll pop them to one side so I'm going to get all of my um things together first for the head so that's two head we want the ears four ears two sides of the head and then we need the top knot as well don't we I can't wait to work with this I think his fringe is just lovely in the pictures so looking forward to seeing that all done and that, oh, and the muzzle, and that's it. So we need two head pieces, the head gusset, four ears, your two horns, and um, your muzzle. And then that will, that's it for the thing. And from this point forward, we're just working with the head now. Okay, see you in a minute. So I do have the book with me, and I am going to be now starting to work through the, um, well, let me just get my bottom thread up. I've chosen a thread that I think matches the felt colour well. And at the moment, I've got it just pinned onto one it. I've got the stitching guide printed, pinned onto one folded piece of my felt. Okay, this is the contrast one that I'm using because I haven't got enough in the other one. So what I'm going to do for mine is because it helps me keep to the edge better, I'm going to move my needle right across to the left. And I am then going to be sewing so I can just see the edge of the paper and I'm just going to sew around the edge of the paper. I do need to make sure that I miss the pins, so we're going to see how that goes. In fact, let's put pin it over towards this side first, and then we can move the pins as we as we go. Or are we better? Uh, actually, I tell you what, we're better off pinning this way through, aren't we? Because then we can get that first one really nice and straight. This is how I've pinned my horn pattern piece. Now this pattern piece is on there is just for a guide. 
and we're just going to use that stitching guide just to stitch through. So I've got a normal length stitch. I don't think um, I've looked on here and Sarah doesn't say to use a smaller stitch length. So that's fine. Um, and I will reverse them at the start and beginning because we are going to be stuffing this. Also put your needle down into your work so it anchors it down for you. And then we're just going to just very gently and we'll just move the points of those pins back slightly as we get to them. It'll just hold that pattern piece in place. I'm not worrying if we go through the paper. We can just, and that, that doesn't bother me because we can just tear that out. But if we get to a point where we need to curve more, leave your needle in your work, lift up your presser foot, and then you can pivot your fabric quite nicely in order to be able to then do your next few stitches. And sometimes on curves, especially on tight curves, you can only do a few stitches at a time. So just take your time with this really slowly. Remember to move the points of your pins just out of the way so you don't sew over those. We don't sew over pins if we can help it in my classes. Right, now the end of the, the horn is quite, quite tricky. So we're going to, we've just sewn around there and that's all doing really nicely. So we're just going to do one stitch at a time now. Oops, she says doing two. Because we want to. Take it really carefully around the edge. And actually, it looks like I've gone too far. Yes, I've gone too far away. So what we're going to do is I want to show you how to correct this because when you're doing it, you might need to correct it too. Where's my snip scum? They're here when you want them. Right. So I'm taking off those threads, but I'm leaving a, a length, okay? So if you can see here, I started to, I've done really well round here. And then when we got to the end here, we've just started to go towards one side. So I'm going to pop on my glasses. I'm going to get my pick and pick, which is our friend, not our foe. And then I'm just going to undo the stitches that I think are in the wrong place. Just trying to get only the thread and you can just give it a little tug sometimes that helps bring it up out of the pile of the felt. So tug on your top thread and it just lifts it up so that you can see the stitch. So this is my invisible mending or invisible fixing method when I'm doing things and they go wrong and I don't want anybody else to know and obviously you know but we don't want anybody else to know. Right, so we've now got back to where I think the stitching is straight and I'm happy with. So for now, I'm just going to take the, could this pin out because the pattern is, is, is fixed onto the felt. And I'm going to go in between the two pieces of felt. And I'm going to locate the last stitch that we did. And I'm going to put my quick and pick underneath that last stitch and two loops will come out. And then I put my quick and pick thing, not the blade, just the point, and use the back of the quick and pick between those and I just pull those two threads up. So what it's done is it's pulled, pulled the bobbin and the top thread through to the inside. And then gonna knot these two pieces together, the thread together. And that knot's going to go inside the felt, between the two pieces of felt. If I can tie knots, but obviously I'm on camera and so it's not helping. Just do that nice and tight. I'm going to do, two, I'm going to do three actually. Right, and then I'm going to lay those threads down inside the fabric between where the next lot of stitching is going to be to hold that horn. Let's just take off these long tails. We need about an inch, I'd say. We don't need to, just because we don't want it to come undone, so we just want to stay inside there. So I've just smoothed the the ends of the, the um, threads inside there because they're going to get fixed into the horn. And then I'm going to repin this horn in place. And I'm going to go now, because we've done part of it, I'm going to go down through the middle. And what I'm going to do now is, is line my needle up so that when I am going back in again, I'm going to go right in on top of this last stitch here and leave threads. I'm not going to back tack, leave threads. And then I'm going to carry on and I'm probably going to hand crank it with my... Um, kneel at the edge of the on the side 
rather than use my presser foot because it, I, was, I was taking too many stitches at one go because we want to go really gently round this curve here and it's really tight. So leave your threads because then when we come to the end I'll show you how to hide your threads and join your stitches up so nobody can tell that you went wrong. Okay, that's the theory. This is the theory. Okay, so now I've put in my presser foot, foot back down again. Now I can lower my needle and see where the point is headed and I really want the point to be at the end of that last stitch that I did and that's about there. So I'm going to leave my needle in there and I'm going to just hold on to the ends and just take a stitch. I'm then going to just move my fabric carefully now, just one stitch at a time and hand twist it for the stitches rather than use my foot pedal. So again, just one stitch at a time. In the scheme of things, this might take just a few seconds, but it's not going to actually give us any problem with getting these horns finished. Try not to go too far in one stitch in changing direction, if you can. And then once we're back on this other side here, which we are now, now taking it nice and steady, slowly, using my foot pedal, and to now sew down the other side. And once we needle in my work again, and then just twist it as we go. Oh, not too fast. out now and then off the end and I will reverse stitch at the end because that's where we're going to stuff it just gently. So needle up, let's take this out and let me show you. So what we've done there is we've got these threads here still but if I look on the back here the threads have joined up almost identically to the place where we dropped them off. Can you say? Hopefully you can see that. That's where my join is, where my threads are. It's going to be almost invisible because the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to get a sewing needle. This is the one we use for a tailor's tack. Excuse my squeaky chair. And I'm going to pull it through to the other side but without undoing the stitch. So I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to poke this edge of the thread but matching it up identically. So if it didn't quite match up Make sure that it matches up onto the edge of the previous stitch for you. And then I then do two knots. We only want two at this place, at this point here, nice and tight. So two knots there. Then I trim my threads to be the same length so that I can thread them through carefully together yep that's got them both through now the next thing you've got them both threads on this the top thread and the bottom thread on the same side now we're going to go right in where just underneath that knot and we're only going to let me take that pin out now because I don't need that we're just going to go through one side of the felt not through both sides so if you lift your horn up, you don't want to be able to see your needle on this side or on that side because you want to travel in between the two. Take a big stitch, about an inch, and then pull your threads through. And then when you through, give a little pull on the threads and you'll pull your knot inside the work. And then you can then trim your threads off, put a little bit of pressure on them and they'll snip inside. And then if we look at this horn here, nobody would be able to tell that we'd stopped and restarted. And that's how I do all of my invisible stitching when I'm doing it. So that's that one. So where we've just gone through the paper, just gently just ease it off. There we go. If you've got any bits of paper in, just, just use your fingernail, just take those off. Let's trim our threads. So that's all nice and neat, ready to go. And then the next thing we'll do in a minute is we're going to trim around this horn very carefully, just giving that quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do the other one. So let's just take our threads again, our felt again. We can use the same pattern template. Let's use the, the folded edge, not the, not the place where I've pinked it. 
and put it onto our place so that we've got all of it there in place. Let's put our pins in at the angles going across like that so it just holds it in place for while we're working with our felt and our pattern piece. Where's the other pin? Under here. So I'm just using, I've used four pins, it's up to you what you want to use. Just holding that down. Now hopefully we won't have to invisible stitch because we now know that it's, it's tricky to do it by um, by foot pedal all the way around. I was being a bit optimistic, but with this one we can then follow through. So let's put it up to our machine again. Just stow my needle away. And then we're going to reverse at the start and stop. And then start and head towards the first pin. Just move it back slightly, needling our work to anchor our work down. Following the edge of that pattern piece round. And stop if we get to the pins, just move those backwards. And it is holding the, the pattern piece quite firmly for me, so I'm happy with that. Oh, that one's come out all together, but we've still got the end one in holding it in place, we should be okay. Nice and steady. Right, I'm going to start and hand crank now. So one stitch there. And literally, it does give you just so much more control. And also this can work when you're working on um, thick, if you're doing bag making and you want to sew the top of a, a bag round, then that that's a really good hand cranking it round is a good way of controlling again the, when the fabric when it goes through the thicknesses because sometimes your machine can object. One more stitch in before we have to take that pin out. Put the, that pin away as well. And then let's just do one more. Two more. And then we should be able to now sew around with our foot pedal. Okay, we're just doing what we need to do just to make sure we get as good a result as possible. But I really like that invisible joining method. I've, I use it so much. Um, not that anybody would want to know, but um, I'll just reverse at the end again before you cut your stitches off. Because it just it it just takes away the fear of actually getting something wrong. So there's our pattern piece. We'll just leave ease that off now, and we've got that. Put that somewhere safe for future reference. And so we've got these two pieces now, and I'm going to get my scissors. And what we're going to do now is leave just a couple of millimetres. I mean, on here, Sarah says three thirty seconds of an inch. So you literally you're just going just to the other side of those. So I'm just going that, that way across. And I am using the points of my scissors, but I probably should do just being careful not to leave a jagged line. And we don't want to go through our stitches. So that's that bit off. So that's how that's looking. And then around the edge at the top here where this just going in, just nice and carefully. So just take your time. And you're just trying to keep it even all the way around. Try and move the felt. Um, or twist the felt round to cut it rather than cutting the actual the, the, the moving thing and there's, there's one of the horns probably a little bit generous there so so now that we've got the basic shape we can now just go and just shave off little bits of the felt if we want to just to make sure that we think that it's it's even okay I'm just a little bit off there I think but literally we're like Smid, uh, just a sm oh, I like the word smidge, don't I? But, but just the bare minimum. Because those edges all just fluff up as well as, as we're handling them. Let's do the other one then. So we need to be the same. So they're both looking the same. And 
Are you holding your breath? I'm holding my breath as well. I mean, if you want to, you can cut off the excess first and then you could then fine trim it. And if you've got some of those little fine um, embroidery scissors, then that will probably be a good way of doing that. I haven't got any of those, so that's why I'm doing it this way. But again, just, just shave off a little bit where you think it might need it. Try not to leave any flat spots as well. And just try not to leave too much. Okay. We're not far off, I think. Literally just shaving off the edges of those just to make that, that nice. Okay, we might well t trim this down a little bit more in time, but let's just leave it at that for the moment because it's easy to go too far when you're doing these. The next thing I'm going to do now, so that's one, two horns. So one will go one way and one will go the other way. And then what we're going to do now is um, Sarah says to just open these up in the instructions and then just put some stuffing down these just to um, make those nice. So I don't think she turns them round. No, stuff the horns lightly. Okay, that's fine. So the stitching stays on the outside of these ones. So let me go and get some stuffing and we'll just get those stuffed. Okay, so I've got a bit of stuffing here, that was just the same stuffing that we use for the characters and I'm just going to use some tweezers that I've got just to pop a bit of stuffing into these. I'm just going to get into the edges carefully in between the two if we can. I'm going to make sure that it goes in and goes right down to the end as well. So around the corner and down into the end. A bit more further. Just being careful not to push the tweezers through the wall of the horn that we've just sewn. I'm sure you've seen these being stuffed before, but that's that's basically how I'm going to just keep doing it. Just so that they get a nice cylindrical shape to them. And look as authentic as possible. But as I say, you just try not to not to go through the edge of the wall of your horn with your tweezers. Come on. Just little bits and just keep pushing it in. Right, so I'm going to carry on doing these and then we're going to just do it all but the final little bit. We'll probably just a little bit of the stuffing in that little bit and then those will just stay closed. So I'll just carry on and do that and then we'll show you what we're going to do next because we're going to work on the ears next and get those bits of the head ready because those are the first bits we need when we're going to start and get construction made of Hamish's head. Okay, so we've got two horns there, nicely stuffed and all ready to go. So we're now going to move on to the ear, just put the ear horns to one side. And now we're going to take the pins out of the ears and we're going to match them up into two pairs. And sometimes you might find that some are, some are um, better than others in terms of matching each other. Just rest them on top of each other with the straight edges together. A little fiddly to we can trim these down afterwards. I'm just going to put a pin down the middle because that'll help us when we just come into sew round. So that's one pair. I don't think there's a right and a wrong side in terms of left or right on these. I think they're just an equal kind of thing, but just put them together so that you're happy with how they go. Oh, maybe there is a right and a wrong side. Okay. We'll strip these will be smoothed off any. And we're going to use the same technique as we did before. And if we have to hand crank around this top bit, then we will do. So choose which one you're going to follow in terms of right or wrong. And I have changed my thread, if I've not mentioned that already. So this is now the, the thread that came with the kit. And I'm again going to move my needle across to the, to the left. 
and I'm going to sew it a quarter of an inch seam allowance because that's what we add. Oh no, we didn't add on any seam allowance to this, did we? So we're just going to use just under a quarter of an inch and reverse at the start and stop. Needle in your work so that it'll hold it down for you and then you're just following the edge. And then just start to edge round. Make sure you don't get too strong a point on the end of your ear. That's a nice rounded ear. And if you need to hand crank it, don't be frightened to hand crank it like we did with the horn, just to make sure that we get a nice edge. I'm just lifting up my presser foot just slowly, just gently, and that's just giving me enough leverage just to get round. Keep that shape. I'm just going to reverse at the start and stop because we're going to turn these out. And then needle up. Let's take that out and I'll show you what we've got. Take our threads off. And that's what we've got. Okay, so we can trim around this edge and I'll actually pink and shear this so that it, because it's got a curved edge. So when I finish doing this one, I'll get my pink and shears. And then being careful not to get the points too close to the stitch line, just take some of the fabric out and that will just help you go round. If you've not got pink and shears, let me show you what to do. So if you've not got pink and shears, that's fine, don't worry. Just do little cuts with your snips in towards the stitches but not through them and the tighter the curve the tighter together they are so you're mimicking the the action of the pinking shears by doing it by hand like this but you'll get exactly the same result what you're doing is taking out some of that bulk here so that when it folds to the inside it doesn't make them lumpy you don't want lumpy ears on your hamish okay just finish that on off down here so you can leave a little bit of flat when you get down to the bottom down there Okay, so that's what you want to do with both ears. And then when we're ready, we're going to very carefully turn these the way around. And the best way you can do that is pull the two sides apart and then tuck the bottom bit in as you can. They are fiddly, but again, you can use um, tweezers maybe, but just be careful with your tweezers because we don't want to get a hole in, in our felt because as you know, we've not really got enough to recut these. So you're just giving it a wiggle and it, it'll just start to push through. And then you'll be able to grab it. Easy end over. That's it, because we're only little ears. Just fold that cuff bit down and then you can just use the edge of your, just the curved edge of your shear. I'm not using the point just to ease those out to the stitches. It just makes it a nice little Hamish ear for you. There we go, and just make sure at the end, just being very careful, don't want to push a, a hole through our felt. Got a nice little little ear there, just roll it in your fingers and it'll just, and just press it down. So there's one ear, so we're gonna go ahead and do the other one now. Okay, so we've got those ears done. Let's put our pattern pieces to one side. I can show you what they look like. You want them to be roughly even and then they can be pressed as well so they lie nice and flat. A little bit of shape to them is quite nice actually, so I'm not going to worry. They're pretty much, they're pretty much even. I think it can be difficult to get them exactly identical. I might just take a little bit off the length of that one. And they, they stretch differently as well as, as you're turning them round because it's felt, so just be aware of that too. But anyway, I'm going to go with them. And then we're going to find our pattern pieces here. And then we're going to do the snip down through the pattern piece. So if I put a pin at the end of that piece there. Oh, Mr. Taylor's tag. I've actually missed a Taylor's tag, folks. Let me just go back and do that. I'm just going to do a Taylor's tag on the dot on the bottom of the pattern here, at the bottom of that long slit. Okay, so I've got my two pattern pieces for my heads and I've marked with a pin what I want to be my right side. Oh, don't pull it out, Claire, that's your tailor's tack. And when we have this nose bit together, because we know this is the neck edge where it's going to go down onto the neck, we've got a slit that goes from the little snip we've got on the top of the 
thing and I've put a little single tailor's tack. So there's my double tailor's tack down there, look. My normal tailor's tack. So I've just done a half tailor's tack where I need that snipping to stop. So if I get my notch there, and then we're just going to snip through that pattern down to that single tailor's tack there. Once we're there, we can take that out. We do the same with this one here. That's it. So find my notch again. It's just there. And then we're going to head all the way down to that single tailor's tack just there with the nose of my scissors. And then take that one out, finish with that one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do first is take an ear and we're going to lie that with the ear facing towards the nose and we're going to pin that in place with a pin. We then know we're working on the top side of our head so I can take that pin out. We want to do the same on the other one. So right down at the bottom of that V we're just going to put our pin in to hold our ear in place. And this is on the right side of the fabric, so that's what we've got. So this is our right side of our fabric. We're at the bottom of our slit, and there's our ear just laying on top of that slit at the bottom. Then we're going to take a horn, and we want the point of the horn to be pointing upwards. And we're going to then have it sitting right above the ear. Just there and bunch them up together because you want these to fit quite nicely down into that slit let me just move that one down slightly I don't think it's quite far enough down and that one there it's going to sit right down touching the ear and then we're going to have another pin there probably from the back because of the stuffing I might have stuffed it a little bit too much. Then let's do the other one. That one's down at the bottom, that's fine. Then put the, so the horn is pointing up, just like in the picture in the book. And we can put that into place. So that's what we're going to, that's how it, that's how it's looking at the moment. You need to make sure that you've got your two mirror copies, so you need your two nose sections together before you do this, so that you've got that right. And then what we're going to do now is fold over this flap over the top of the ear, like that at the bottom at the point where it's where it does fold, and make sure the top of your head matches as well. And then when you've got that, you can move your pin that was holding your ear without moving it, and then put it through all of the thicknesses. I think I'll put an extra pin in this side just to hold that together rather than take the other one out. So we've got two pins there. So that's what that looks like. So that's just exactly the same as in the picture. And then we're going to sew down here to that point there. So we're going to sew it all the way down. That's what I understand. Hold on one second. Let me just double check the result, the instructions. Okay, so I've just read the, the um, instructions. Fold the back of the head side piece over to enclose the ear and horn, matching up the edges of the dart, which we've done making sure that the ear is still tucked right up to the snip point, and it is. Back stitch or machine sew machine is easier through all layers from the top edge, starting at a width of 0.3 centimetres, one eighth of an inch, and tapering to nothing just below the snip to finish at the dot. Repeat on the other side of the head. So exactly as I thought we were going to do it. Put those pattern pieces out of the way. Now you're going to have to just be careful with this because you've got the thickness of the horn so your machine might not like it very much. I'm going to move my needle back into the middle position because I want that to be right for when we're stitching and having most of it underneath the edge of the foot. And we're going to do just a couple of stitches there and reverse just to hold that still and then the needle in the work. And now what we're going to have to do is really press this down and I think I'm going to get my awl because that'll help us push this through underneath because the awl which is this instrument here with the point we don't want it to get in the way of the needle but just in front of the needle and under the presser foot it will just help us just get through um 
Let me just think. Uh, okay, no, we'll carry on. Okay, let's try this. So just helping it through, just nice and gently. Now I've got two new pins there, so now we're on to the, the horn. I can take out my top and my bottom pin. Just make sure your edges are together underneath as you're sewing. And you can just put pressure with your awl on the fabric underneath as you're going through. I'm just going to sew through it about an eighth of an inch. And then we're going to taper to nothing when we get to our tailor's tack at the bottom, which I can see is just there. So let me take this pin out for the ear because that's now dealt with. And we're just helping that fabric through. I'm not going to back stitch at that point there. As you could see, I could just take my work out there without it. So that's what we've got. Take that out of the way. So we started at an eighth of an inch here, and then we've sewn across to hold all of those in, and we've just come finished past. So when we open that out, there's the ear and the horn sewn in, and we've got some space at the top here to be able to sew the gusset bit in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because we didn't backstitch at the bottom here, because it was a bit tricky, and we don't tend to backstitch at the bottom of darts, I'm just going to separate out those two threads, and then I'm just going to do three knots, but I'm going to leave the tails long on those, and not snip them off, because I want them to, to stay so they can't unravel at all. Okay, but I will trim off the bits at the top. So that's what we're left with. So now we can take out the tailor's tack at the bottom of the dart because we've sewn to that point. So those should all just come out. If they don't, just snip close to where your threads are coming out and then the other one should pull straight out. So there we've got one side of Hamish's head ready. Let's do the other one. And I'll do this one off camera because you know what we're doing. We're just gonna fold that around to encase the bottom of the, the, bottom of the ear. Make sure it's lying flat match up the top. I put an extra pin here just holding that steady. I'm going to take that pin out at the mark in the neck because we don't need that and the ear and just make sure you go through your ear to hold that still. Oops. If I don't go through just give your pin a little twist and then we're going to start again at the top at this head edge and we're going to sew down at, a, at an eighth of an inch just giving us a bit of something to hold on to. Reverse, needling our work and then using our awl we can now help that feed through. Just take your pins out as you go and making sure that all your edges are together so we don't miss anything out. Nice and steady. Final pin out, now we're on the ear. And then we're going to finish on this um, point on the dot again, like we did before. So we can have two even heads, two even, even sides to the head. And there we go, we've caught that again now nicely. Take our tailor's tack out at the bottom here. Separate our threads. And then again, I'm going to do three knots, but I'm not going to snip off this thread at the bottom here. I'm going to leave that long. So it's less likely to unravel then if it's left long. There's two, one more. Makes that three. Then I'm just going to sniff off the threads at the top. Okay. This is what we have at this point. So we have one side of the head there with an ear and a horn. And the other side of the head with the ear and the horn. So we're doing well. Let's crack on and do the next bit. Okay, so the next piece we need now is the head gusset. So we're just going to take our pins off here and we're going to sew the darts in this. So take a pattern piece off and just ease that off so it leaves our tailor's tacks in and put the pattern piece somewhere safe. And then this is our top of our fabric there. So that's where we took it off. So I'm just going to mark that so I remember that's the top until we've finished working with it. And we're going to locate the two ends of the um, dart that we did with our little notches and fold those two together so they're on top of each other and then we're going to locate the edge of the tailor's tack which is just there so it's only a very small tailor's tack look it's not long at all 
and we're just going to sew though sew along that to that point okay make sure on top of your notch a couple of stitches forward a couple of stitches back and then we're sewing in to the point which is there and then snipping where's my stress on there now so stick my, my starting threads off narrow but again on the ends of my darts I'm going to tie those knots again do three and then we're going to repeat it for the other side of the dart as well. So I'll just go and do that one. Okay, so now we're going to just orientate ourselves correctly for this. Now I've had to look at this a couple of times, so it isn't always straightforward from reading the instructions. Basically, when we've finished, the, the darts in the, in the head gusset are going to match the darts that are holding the ears in place. So that's how we know that's right. The notch here is going to coordinate correspond with the top of the nose joint here so then we know that this is the right way round because it has to go that way and this actually is the front but it stops at the um is that the front or is that the yeah i've got a mark to the front so the longer piece from the darts is actually at the front and then the shorter piece is at the back that's what we need to do to orientate ourselves so again just pop your head pieces with your horns placing forward and the flat bits of the nose forward and just put those darts together and then you'll be able to walk this down to the front here so that you get your neck edge onto the bottom here and you'll end up with your two neck edges like that. And that's that's how we're going to start because then we're going to take this pattern piece here and put it on the front there. Once we've got the first one done, then we're, we're, we've started, haven't we? And we are going to then put a pin in there to hold that together. So make sure those right edges, those right edges, those edges just match. Now we're going to have to take this steady because we've got a curve going this way and then we've got a curve going down this way and what we're going to do is we're going to be sewing that onto there and then we're going to be pivoting to the top of the nose before we then pivot round to start and add the ear so it looks quite complicated and it's just a little tricky but you can do it so don't worry and we're just going to start with, so I've just got that one pin in at the moment because then I think what we'll do is we'll use our awl to help us. And I've got some little dots on here, but we probably need to just be aware of where that's going to finish. Right, okay. So we know, so we've got a notch there. And we know that our nose piece here is one and a quarter inches. We know we've got two quarter inches um, of our seam allowance. So we're just going to come in. What I'm going to do is put a notch, another notch, do it at an inch. So that's going round, that's then going to hit just there, that's going to then go across the nose at the end just there and then we're going to pivot again before we then come round. Okay, yes, right, so I'm bringing another notch an inch down from the one that is on there. Okay, it'll all make sense she says okay That's what we're doing this. so we've just got the one pin in because that's all we can do because this is going to be keep moving as, as we're sewing it and we've got to manipulate it then we need to just keep that together that needs to be level with there so let's start that off kind of level with that one okay so we've got the long piece going along here and we're going to go around the head and round here with it. So I'll put my pin back to three and a half because then I can follow my quarter of an inch better. Okay, so a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back just to get us going, needling our work. 
So I'll take that first pin out now because we've done with that. Then what we're going to do is use that awl and we're going to just manipulate these. So we've got this, this curve going this way and this curve going this way. And we're going to match it up so that the notch that we've just done is going to end on the end of the end of this square nose bit. But we can only do a bit at a time. So using your awl here, let me just lift you up slightly. Using your awl here, we're just going to do a few stitches at a time. And then we're going to just lift our presser foot up and we're going to match up our raw edges by pulling this, the top piece of fabric this way and the bottom piece the other way. And then we're going to do a few more stitches, still keeping our three quarters of an inch seam allowance because remember our sewing machine can only sew in a straight line. Just literally three or four stitches and then we're just going to just keep moving this round. And then you're just going to match those up so that first notch finishes. So the first notch I've got just here is going to end on the end of the nose. So just use your awl just to hold everything in place. I can't quite line it up just yet. So let me just do a few more stitches. And we're going to stop just a quarter of an inch away from the end of that nose. We're then going to stop. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to twist the whole head forward towards us. The bit that we've just sewn, we're going to fold that back out of the way, making a bit of a fold and a triangle in the fabric. And then we're going to sew again down the end, top of the nose so that the, no the notch, the second notch, is, is in line with the end of the nose. Let me just show you. So we, we've sewn around this bit here. Let's do it upside. So let me just do it upside down. So this is from the neck, and we've sewn round here now, and then we're stopping here, quarter of an inch from the end here, and then we've left our needle in our work, but lifted up our presser foot, and now we're moving everything round so we can sew to this point. So one notch finished here, and the other notch is going to finish here, and that's how we're going to know that we're at the right point for this section here. Hope that all makes sense. It does to me. Hopefully it does to you. So we're just going to keep those raw edges together, keep the bulk of the fabric back out the way. Needle back down. And don't forget the end of the nose is going to be covered by the muzzle. So a quarter of an inch from this, this um, second notch, we need to just stop. So a little bit more. And then we're going to lift up our presser foot again. And now we're going to move the head round again and take the bulk of this fabric back again. So that it's out of the way. Just make sure where I am. I'm a little bit proud of there. Okay, and then I press the foot down again. And again, we've only we've got these two two differentiating curves. So we can only do a few stitches at a time and then stop. And then a couple more stitches. And then we can start to match up our darts now but keep these edges of the fabric together so that they match up. Quarter of an inch all the way around. So I think we're through the difficult, what I would class as the difficult part. My um, notches, at my darts are on top and I'm just gonna tuck that ear inside the head and out of the way. So I want the dart for the ear to, for, to, to match the dart in the gusset. So I'll just take that fabric back slightly. Make sure it's on top of each other, and it is. And then flatten it down with your awl so you can hold it flat. And you're doing a few stitches, helping it round. It's quite thick just there because you've got the top of the horn. And then we're going to start and bend round the top of the head. So again, you're manipulating your fabric by lifting your presser foot. And manipulate it round so you can keep this quarter of an inch going around this curve. If you are hand sewing this, you, would, you wouldn't need to have to worry too much about this because you would be, you'd still have to sew your gusset on, but you'd be doing it by hand from the front. So it'd be easier to see. But obviously this is what you need to do if you're machine sewing it. And then the neck edge is now matching up at the bottom. And I can just pull this edge across with my awl and put my presser foot down. Down to the edge. And I'm just going to reverse there just to hold on to it. So yeah, 
that is tricky when you've got the two corresponding circles um, curves but it is doable so if I open this up now this is what we've got if you look at it we've sewn all the way around here we started here around the neck we pivoted there and we pivoted here and then we've gone around the neck don't forget the muzzle's going to cover this bit here so don't get too hung up on that being pucker free although that being said mine is which is good and yours might be too let's not pull out the tailor's tax that's the tailor's tax for the eyes just make sure that stays in place because we need that to mark where Hamish's eyes need to go. I'm going to cut through those threads so that's staying where it should be. And then there we've got the, the dart on top of the head is matching the dart with the um, horn. And that's sticking out nicely. And his ear sticking out nicely. So that's all good. Okay, let's do this again then. So we're going to do it again. Having that second notch in definitely helps. So this time, let's push everything through to the to the to the inside again, and we're going to go to the front of the nose. So let's locate where the nose is here. So that's the front edge we're going to work with, and we're starting with the neck edge here. So there's your horn. Look, can you see? And I'm turning it over so I've got the right wrong side facing up, so that I can pop that neck edge onto there. We want that just to be square, and that's the only place we're putting a pin. We're then going to sew around here and remember we put in that other dart, that other notch, it could probably even be a little bit further down as well, but that notch there is going to go under there and match up with the edge of, of our nose. The other one matches up with the edge of the nose and then we come round the top of the head again where the darts match up and then down the back of the head. You're probably screaming at it and saying, we've got it Claire, move on, don't worry. But I'm just trying to make sure that those that aren't sure Maybe I say something the second time I do it that I didn't say the first time and that what's, that's your eureka moment to know that you've got it. So we're putting the neck edge under the presser foot, quarter of an inch seam allowance, one pin in and we're just going to do our stitches front and back just to reverse and just to start it off, okay? You can turn, then take that pin out. Then get your awl, or if you've not got an awl, I know you keep talking about this, but use the point of your quick and pick. You've just got to be careful because whilst they're both pointed, this one's got a blade on it. So if you push too hard with that, it's going to cut through your fabric. But if you use it, you know, carefully, you can use a quick and pick a bit like an awl. You've just got to be careful of that blade that you don't push it through. You could also use the ends of your snips if you've got those and hold those together. But you need something thin that will go underneath the um need um the presser foot. So again, we're going to we're aiming for that notch to be matched up onto there, and we're we're going and we've got these different curves again. So we're just trying to do a few stitches at a time, and then we're just on this occasion we're pulling the the fabric back in order to meet the curve. Press the foot up because we're working with the the other body part, the the um, side head on the top this time, whereas the other one we were working with it down. So we're just pushing that flat. Sorry, my hands get in the way, but I'm trying to do mine too. And we're going to stop at a quarter of an inch from the end, needle in the work. Then press up, lift up the presser foot. And now we're going to pull the top of the head forward and we're going to push the the head that we've already sewn back so that the end of the nose is on onto that notch make sure your edges are lined up together underneath I'm trying to flatten this down so you can see press the foot down then across the bottom here and on the notch on the um, dot again press the foot up and now we're going to pull these across now at a right angle again. Pull the top underneath bit away so that you've got it's it's tucked away. And then you can start and sew this bit here just a bit at a time again. Remember, just keep your quarter of an in quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is about half a cent. Is it half a centimeter? Quarter of an inch, half a centimeter, I think. And then I'm just easing it round darts are coming up so we can see that that's matching so that's good hold that in place with your awl as you're sewing needle in the work that's it 
and then we're just going to just now just ease this forward and over those bits there. And don't forget his head, his hair's going to cover all of this section. I'm lifting my presser foot again just while I just manipulate and we're back to doing just a centimetre at a time. Because that then, then helps it all sit straight. And you almost roll in these fabric pieces together so that they can kind of match up and get close. And you're wanting the end of the neck to finish at the same point so sometimes along here you've got a little bit extra fabric that just needs to ease in and reverse at the bottom of the neck it is tricky but it is totally doable and it's actually easier than it looks when you first see it you're going to go oh my god I can't do that but you can Okay, and there we are, we've got that sewn, just making sure I've got seam allowance all the way round. Oh, I've got a little jog in my stitches there, I'm just going to smooth that out. So I don't know why that's gone like that, but it has. So I just put it back in my, in my machine, and then I'm just going to smooth out those two stitching lines. I'll show you it in a second, hold on. So just here, where's my all gone? Under my machine. So just there, I'd got a jig in my stitches. Look where I'd gone there, and then it had jumped across to here. So all I've done is gone beyond the um, stitch line where the jig is, and started sewing it again, and then joined it past it, and that just circumvents that. So hopefully you can see that. Again, it's not about going not going wrong. It's about understanding what you need to do to fix it if you do. So let's now pop this the right way round being careful not to stretch the neck if we can help it and there we've got a nose we've got our darts matching up with our horns that's all good we've got a nice back of the head I think we're pretty pleased with that is that looking Hamish like yet kind of is okay so that's good where's my have I pulled my tailor's tack out for my other eye I have I'll have to do that one again See, I didn't mean to do that. So this is what we've got at the moment now. So I, that's pretty good. Then we're going to be working on the muzzle and getting the muzzle stitched and sewn on and the eyes. And then I think we'll be, we'll be stuffing it. I don't think it means... Um... Oh, we do. We stuff it already. Okay, let's stuff it now then because I've got my stuffing here. So let's just put a whole load of stuffing in there. To make this look nice and it'll give it a lot more character as well won't it as we're starting to stuff so let's make sure we put plenty into the nose plenty into the back of the head we've got quite a large neck opening i think but it might have stretched slightly but we can cinch that in if we need to as we're sewing you if you've made hamish before you by hand you might know that that's already quite large anyway doesn't concern me at the moment because we can fix it Oh, look, here he comes. Can't wait to get his fringe on. That's the bit I'm waiting for, really. Just pull out that corner of his nose. And I like to stuff my characters really quite firmly. We can always add in more if we need to at the end. Not at the end, as we're going, but um, yeah, I do like to put quite a lot of stuff in. Just helps them hold their shape, I think, and even if the, if it settles a little bit, then you don't lose the, the character, of your character of your character. I will be sewing my eyes on, before we sew that neck edge up as well just so that we've got that done because I like to be able to hide my threads inside well that's a nice shaped head Hamish okay I'm going to leave it like that for the moment while we finish off a bit more just pulling out that bit of the taste I got caught in the seam just making sure that nose is pushed out and pushing plenty in 
So there we go. There's Hamish's head. Pretty much done so far. We've just got the, we've got the muzzle to do, haven't we? And sewing on the eyes. Um, and then we're done. So I'm just going to um, get ready with that. Read the instructions in advance. I'm not keeping everybody waiting with what we're doing. I've got a piece of Taylor's tassel in there. Um, so that you're not waiting for me with what I'm doing. Oh, I've got to put his hair on as well. That's the other. Let's just try it because I'm eager to see what that's going to look like. Where's his hair gone? Here it is. Look at that. How cute is that going to be? That is just amazing. Right, okay, I'm going to carry on now with what we're doing and then we will then get to that point and I'll be very happy. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so the next piece that we're going to work on, now we've got the stuffed head, is the muzzle. So if you want to get your muzzle pattern piece together, and this is the one that we put the running stitches in in order to hold it. And what we're going to do first is just fold up. So we're going to fold over on the second line, so the... So the um, I don't know, the upper line of the tacking stitches. We're going to fold on that and then we're going to then fold it back so the two lines of tacking stitches match. Okay, so we're just putting a little tuck in there. So putting this row of tacking stitches to that row of tacking stitches, just like that. And then we're just going to put a pin along that, holding it straight. You're looking for this circular shape to continue at the sides. That Because if you look at the patterns, kind of off circle shape, and then when we fold it on this first line and bring it to the second line, we kind of start to get that shape back again, don't we, in, in, in the circle shapes. So that's what we're aiming to do. Just comes down a bit, doesn't it? So that's right. Put a pin in there. Oh, pin doesn't want to go in. That's it, okay. So that's the first bit. The second bit is to do with these and we're going to bring the edge of one to the edge of another and just make like a mini dart. So put those two lines together and then we're going to push that fullness, the um, dart at the back, the little pleat at the back, going to push that up towards the top. Okay, and that's going to give us this little nostril here. And what Sarah says to do is just to put a few little stitches in that. So I think that what I'm going to do is just hold this open like this and put a pin in just to hold it. And then the same on the other side with that um, dart as well. Where's it gone? There and there. Put those two together. And a pin in there. I'm just going to put a little couple of stitches in just to hold it still for me. Let me use this, what's this colour? That's pretty good now, that'll do. Oh, we have got actually in the kit, what am I saying? In the kit, we've got the wrap of thread here, haven't we? Which is supposed to be a better match, probably almost exactly identical to the colour I've got actually. But we'll use the one from the kit, because we've got it, so we might as well. Not take off too much. We've got our little needle in the kit too, so we'll use that. Just pop my glasses on, the thread in my needle. That's it. Make sure I have it double, might as well have it double, hey. Then I'm just going to put a quarter's knot in the bottom, so I'm going to put my threads over my needle and wrap the threads round twice, one, two, and then I'm just gonna hold onto those wraps on the needle and pull it through. And that gives me a nice little knot at the end. And just at the very top of these darts here, I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in and that'll just hold them together for me. Just make sure we get the right lines together. And literally that will just hold that shape in place. Doesn't need to be very many stitches. I'm just putting a couple of stitches on top of each other just to hold it in place. And then that's actually going to fold up to the top. So I'm just going to put a running stitch to the end here. And then just through the fibres, but not through to the other side, I'm just going to tack down that dart 
just to the rest of it because that'll just hold it for me in place so you can't see it on the other side and then just finish off that thread with a couple of stitches okay i'll show you on the other one again let's put my knot in the end of my thread two wraps hold onto the threads and then pull it along right so what i'm doing is i'm putting the edges that there's two lines that we did there putting those together i remember we didn't want to put any cut marks in because we didn't want those cut marks in the top of our muzzle and so I'm just putting a couple of stitches on the edge we can touch tuck those threads in at the end when we've finished don't worry about those and I'm not going all the way down to the point just putting a couple of stitches just at the start because that'll just hold it shut for us and then I want the um so then I'm taking my needle and thread back up towards the top. So there's my couple of stitches, look, just here and here. And then I'm just going to fold that dart on the stitch line that we've just done to the top. And then I'm just putting a couple of stitches. Let me just move that pink thread that, just down this side here. And it's just going through the edge of the dart and just through a few of the fibres of the felt, not all the way through to the other side and not enough to be able to see it on the other side. So you can't see those stitches through on the other side, but it's just enough just to hold it down whilst we're working with it and I'll keep everything in place. Right, so I'm just doing a couple of stitches in place now out of sight, just to hold those in place. Okay. So there we are, there's his little nose coming together. I'm going to take these pink stitch, these pink threads out now because we've used those. We don't need those anymore. Try not to make him too fluffy by pulling on too many threads. Just served its purpose in letting us know where that needed to be. And again here. Take those out now. Right, okay, so there we've got his nostrils look and they're kind of in the same direction. They're pointing towards each other. At the moment, his lips seem to be holding together okay. So let's see how we get on with this now. So that's what we've got. That's what it looks like from the inside with those darts pushed upwards. And then we've got the little fold in his nose. So let's have a look at this now. Let's move these things out of the way. So now we want to position this over his nose so that it's central. So this bit here should line up. I just took those threads in. So it's supposed to, his nostril is supposed to line up with the seam on his head. So let's pop that in there and put a pin in. And this one here is supposed to line up here as well. So let's line that up. And the pin. Okay, so those line up. Let's do this one again. So his nose wants to seem to crumple. I might end up putting a little bit of stuffing in there just to hold it, kind of keep its shape. Okay. So to me, it wants to just crinkle in the middle. And then down here, we want to pull this down, not so that we lose the mouth, but so that it then sits nicely. Where's my pins gone? sits nicely on his throat. So I'm just making sure that the mouth creases the same on either side so that, that looks equal and then just pinning that down. So let's have a look. I think that I'll end up with a little bit of stuffing in there just to help it keep its shape because I want it to kind of just be sticking out but it's kind of about right. Okay let's have a look at some more thread and then let's see about getting this sewn on. So I'm going to sew this on by hand because we need to have those little delicate stitches, don't we? So let's do quite a bit of thread because we've got to, I want to double it and we'll go all the way around. We can cast off and then start again, but that should do. Okay. So threading the needle, finding the end. 
and then two wraps and then that's got the end in there right let's have a look and see so what I'm going to do is th three quarters sew it on and then put a little bit of stuffing in I think just to hold these nostrils out like this and then that'll be fine do I want to do a tuck under his mouth I'm just going to take those out his mouth is just a fold isn't it it should be okay we'll be careful with that okay so what we're going to do now is sort of holding it in place. I'm going to just going to come through through inside the felt and then come up just towards one of these nostrils. That's where I'm going to choose to start. So I can bury my knot inside there. Then we want to take a little stitch out of the felt and a little stitch out of the top fabric. Sorry, just had to sneeze. Okay, so we're just watching this pin now. So we've got one little stitch in. So we're going to take another little stitch that's just going to span that seam and then back into the felt, into the lighter felt and just cinch it in. Now we've got that anchored down, I'm going to take that pin out because we don't want it pins to be in the way. And now I'm going to move along. And I'm always making my little stitches at right angles to the fabric that I'm sewing. So a little stitch there, travel along inside this tan coloured felt. And then I'm not catching the um, dart at all. I'm catching the top fabric so that it holds it over the dart. And again here, little stitch. And then, then just twisting my needle round to get a bite of the felt. And then just pulling that tight. That's just giving a little, little stitch. And then we, I know that from before, from making um, Clementine, we can fuzz those stitches up a little bit um, with the felt, just because the, the fluff of the felt will cover them. Give them a little. So we're just trying to make sure that they're nice and neat and even. There we go. Oops. Thread knotted up. So it's not, I mean, this, this muzzle really is decorative, isn't it? It's not holding any sti anything in together at all. It's just decorative. Okay, so let's just carry on with this now. So um, needle in the tan fabric and then through the other one. And if I hold this up, I hope you, you can see if it focuses for me. Let me move something out of the way. Just see those little stitches just holding that and we can... We can fluff up the felt with our point of our needle in the end and it'll just hide that edge. So it's going on quite nicely, I think. So we're starting to come down to the other nostril now. So let's just keep our spacing uniform. Or as uniform as we can get it anyway. Just cinch these stitches in nice and tight. Got the horn. There we go. So we're nearly over the top of his nose there now, so we can start and see that all coming together. Let's just turn this round. So I've just got my fingers inside his, his neck and then finger on the top, and that just seems to be holding him nice and firm. Let's do a stitch just here now. Holding that together. A bit close to the other one, but never mind. Or do I mind? Yes, I, uh, no, I'm going to leave it yet. And I'm just going to span over that seam there so this thread's going behind the seam I just need that to go into the felt at the right amount oops watch my fingers on the pins right we've got that one held down now so I'm take that pin out as well for the two nostrils and we can start and give him a bit of shape now that's looking better isn't it okay I'm going to go down towards the mouth. Now we need to make sure that the two mouth edges are at the right level still. So we just keep your finger on there. 
And we're just going to keep going down here. If you get two threads, just make sure that you can, I mean, I can always undo those threads there once I finish, can't I? I can see those stitches a little bit. The ones in the dart that I did, you can see a little bit. I'll see if it bothers me once it's finished. Still just going down and round. So here I want to just make sure that lip's tucked over. So we're going down towards the lip. You can take quite a chunk of the um, felt underneath when you are stitching. Because you're not going to see any of that. It's just when you come up through the, the, the lighter felt on the top that you see it. So always make sure that they're at right angles to the to the edge of the fabric and it will look much neater then rather than it going off at a diagonal. So you do your travelling at the diagonal underneath the characters on the fabric underneath. So we've just gone round that lip there, look. So I've just caught it in the edge there and then another one in and that's doing okay. Apologies if you can hear noise outside. We live in an apartment, so here in Spain, so there's often noise outside that I can't control. Just going round here, so his lips starting to open again, so I just need to fold that across to hold it still. So let's see where I said that one's just a bit, a bit above the seam. So that one will be two. So we keep his mouth straight for him. We don't want him smirking, do we? Come on, Hamish. Sit, sit, let's keep your head right. I just want to make sure it's all just lying flat, nice and flat against his head. No loops in your in your threads. I'm just sort of going to take one stitch into his mouth. I think that'll probably be the best way of doing that. And then one stitch holding his mouth shut. Oh, I was going to stuff it, wasn't I? Oh, it's looking all right, actually. It does crumple. I am going to put a little bit of stuffing in and just see if I like it. If I don't, I'll take it out again. So I'm just going to take this tacking thread out that we put in earlier, just to tell us where our folds were. And that has helped me remember 
and understand where the lips were so that made that bit a little bit easier but we can take that out now because we've finished with that and if I can undo it at the side here there's my quick one that'll be easier than a pin just hook it under the threads and just ease them out making sure you don't pull on the actual felt itself so it doesn't want to come out out here and see if that makes it any easier. There we go, that made it easier. So his mouth is staying in place, the little folds, that's good. So I'm going to get my tweezers and just get a little bit of stuffing. Literally just a really, really small amount and just see if we can just pop that in there. I should have left a bigger gap really. If you're doing, if this works when you're doing it, just leave a bigger gap for his, the stuffing to go in. I don't want to stuff out his nostrils or his lips, but we do want to, he doesn't want any Botox, does he, or fillers, but he just needs his nose just to not crumple, I think, when it's when you push on the end. So this is going in. Then once we've got it in, we can position it a bit better. Oh, and you're losing your stuffing from out of your neck, Hamish. Right. That might be all we need. So just distribute it around just to make it nice, give him a nice shape. Yeah, you see that doesn't that doesn't collapse now when I put my finger on it. So I'm happy with that. So I would suggest you just leave a bit of a bigger gap because you don't want to stretch this piece of felt just here where we've put that stuffing in. Mine might have done slightly. Let's see if we can get it lying flat. I've got a loop in one of my stitches. Don't want that. Just give up just give it a pull. That's it, got it. Make sure your threads from your starting threads are all inside. Stitch there, we're nearly there. You've nearly got your nose on. more right there we go how's that looking okay i'm happy with that it's got, it's got a little bit of stuffing in his nose just to make keep that shape you might not need that it, it's all going to depend on how these seams here have come in for you and and how this all fits together underneath but i like that that's nice i'm happy with that so let's finish off this thread so to finish off this thread i'm going to do a couple of stitches in place along the line of the nostril if you remember i put a couple of stitches in just to hold that in place before make sure you've got no loops in your threads because you will see them afterwards and then i'm going to do a couple of stitches either side i think because that gives it a nice long tail it then doesn't come undone i could do still another little stitch here can't i just to hold it in place And just keep going backwards and forwards through, just using up the last last bit of the thread that I got. I'm not really cinching it in. I'm not trying to cinch it in. I'm just trying to lose that that end of that thread. So now I'm just going to push it through, and then we'll put it off. And that should be enough to hold that in place. That's your for your eye, Hamish. Don't want to lose that one. Okay. So here we are at the moment, his little ears, his horns, I might trim those down. But now if you just take your fingernail and just run the f your finger over the top of those stitches that you've just done, it just fluffs up the um, felt a little bit. You don't want to make it kind of come undone away from your stitches, but it'll just 
help that just hide those threads for you where you've just sewn. Just blur the line if you like. Okay, so there we go with his head. And the next thing I'm going to do is going to put on his eyes. So let's have a look at doing that, shall we? Okay, so I've just got my doll needle out just so that I can um, have a go at these eyes. And you want these two round black little beads here. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my doll needle, and I don't think it will, no, my doll needle won't go through his eyes, so that won't help with that one. Okay, let's have a look and see what long needles we've got in our sewing stash and see if any of these will go through. So what I'm looking for is a needle that will go through the bead fairly easily because we want to go through several times. That one looks like that one will work, so let's use that instead. And then we're going to thread that up with some black thread, I think. So here's my black thread. And I'm going to double the thread up. Oops. And do it quite long because we're going to be going backwards and forwards. So let's thread this long needle. And then find the end to make it double. So you can see my thread's quite long. And then we're going to smooth that down so that we've not got any knots in it. And then we're going to do a quilter's knot again. Right, that's a much better knot. So I've got a nice big knot at the end of my thread. Gosh, it looks very messy, doesn't it, where I am? Let me just straighten this up a little bit, shall I? So you can actually differentiate what I'm trying what I'm working on. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to go up through the neck and come out where his eye is supposed to be with that tailor's tack. Don't let go of your needle because you don't want to lose it. What that does is it buries that thread with a nice long thread into the stuffing in here. Okay. And then what I think I'll do is go through here. Let's use the doll needle. Where's the doll needle? To just get his eyes in the right place on the either side because I've lost my tailor's tack. But I can see the stitches from it. So his eyes should be about there, I think. Okay. So I'm just going to use that as a marker. So let's just put the button on the, the bead on first. So I've just got the stitch through. And then I'm going to go through here, squeeze his head together so that I can feel my needle at the other side and I'm going to come out. If you can use your doll needle, use your doll needle because that will be easier. But as I say, mine won't. Mine won't go through the little bead. Give it a pull so we've not got any threads showing. And then I'm going to thread the bead on now onto the other side of the needle. Keeping your threads nice and neat. Then I'm going to go through here. So hopefully you can see basically we're just going to get we're going through the head rather than just sew it to the felt on either side. We're actually going through the head in the middle. So now I've got that one on as well and just check that for placement. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? I'll take that doll needle out now because that's finished with and we could take these tailors tacks out. Because we've finished with those two now. We know where Hamish's eyes need to be. So then it's a case of going finding the hole and going through the bead again. Got a bit of pink thread caught up there, look. Through the hole and then across to the other side. And I'm going to do this five or six times because I think that that will hold on to the, hold on to the eye much better. Am I indenting it slightly or not? Yeah, that's quite nice. So I have indented it slightly. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. Just give it a little bit of, but not too much. Just make sure, look, I've got a little loop of thread there. I don't want that. So separate out your two strands and pull on one and then the other until that, that thread loop goes. That one's not that one then. Must be the other one. That's it, got it. Did you hear it go in? 
just flatten out his face again because we don't want him to be too, too indented. And then we can thread that needle through the button again, through the bead again. And you'll, you'll just feel it every time you start to do this, it'll just get it just a little bit tighter each time. Just make sure you're coming out at the right place for your thread to go into the eye. There's his eyes. Black on black is really is my nemesis for sewing. So let's just make sure we've not got any loops there. And then find the hole and go through. Oh, not through the felt. Set. So again, we've got another little one through and then back through this side again. Need to be a bit lower. If you've got the idea of what I'm doing with this, you can just fast forward through the video. Of course, don't forget, don't, don't have to sit and painfully watch me do this if you don't want to. Otherwise, I've, I have heard some people watch my videos as a bit of background and entertainment. So I'm going to say hello to Anne because Anne did say that she likes to put me on in the background. So if Anne is listening from my Facebook group, then I'm very happy to keep you company, Anne. And I hope you're enjoying watching Hamish being made. So through the eye again, which is here. And then back into the felt again. You're trying to keep your stitches sort of in the in the same place if you can, just to keep them as neat as possible. You still start to make a bit of a channel through. It just means that you, you're holding onto the button. So the buttons are actually pulling against each other. They're not pulling against just the felt. And that makes them so much stronger because you can get a real, that's a real grip on there now on those buttons. Buttons, beads. I think they're actually beads, aren't they? So let's just put a couple more through just for extra insurance in case anybody decides to hang him up by his eyes. But hopefully they won't. Coming out the right place. But it starts to get tight for the needle to go through as well, so we don't want to cause any problems with that. Right, so I'm going to make this the last stitch through. Good job because we've just got a knot in our thread. And just deal with that. That's it, got rid of that. Okay. So that's how Hamish is looking. I just need him to just to be a bit even on it both sides with his eyes. But that's just indented them just slightly. It depends on whether you like it or not. Then you know, then um do whatever you're happiest with. So I'm going to go through the fabric again to the other side, but I'm not going to go through the bead. I'm just going to move the bead to one side. And then I'm just going to take a couple of stitches when I've got the bead to one side underneath that felt. This is like this is almost like you cast off stitches really. But there's no gonna be no tension on there at all. So that should hold in place. And just hold that in place for us. So we've got a nice because the trouble is you can do a little knot, but then it just gets pulled out through the felt, doesn't it? So if I just move his eye lock, you can just see there's a couple of stitches just behind there. So just keep that nice and tight and then I'm going to then fed, thread the needle back in the head and I'm going to come out through the neck. Just watch your fingers because you've got to look out for where it comes through. And there it is. Just pull the needle through and then I can just snip off that thread. Okay, that should be sufficient. So if I just pop a little bit more stuffing in here. Just think he just needs a little bit more in just to make him nice and firm still just a little bit squidgy in places i don't want him to be soft in the head do we just be careful not to stretch your neck edge as well just up there as well and you will feel the resistance from the threads that you've just used to do his eyes as well but just do what you can. The felt stretches a little bit as well, but you don't really want to be stretching the felt. You just want to be making it so that he's nice and firm and got some dimension to his face. Okay, I'm happy with him now. This bit will fold that in when we get to do his neck. 
but he's feeling nice. Thank you very much. So there we go. So that's that's Hamish's hair. Oh, no, it isn't. We've got to do the hair. Oh, my gosh, the best bit. How can I forget that? Right, so that's all in there. Hamish, you need your fringe. Right, let's have a look at this and see what we're doing with this. So we've got one notch for the front, and that's where the fringe is. And just how sweet is he going to look once he's got his fringe on? Look, look at that. Isn't that just adorable? Right, I'm going to have a look at the instructions. My husband's just making my tea, so I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have my tea, eat my tea as well. And then I'm going to come back to you and we're going to just finish off his hair together. And then we'll be all done for his head. And then we're on to his body. But look at that. Oh, I was out of the way, sorry. Look at that, isn't he cute? Okay. Right, off for some tea and then I'll get this finished and then I can get it uploaded for you, can't I? Um, and you can all have a go at doing your Hamish as well. Okay, so now we're going to sew the... Um, the toupee or his hair on and what we need to do first is position this so that we fold it backwards so we've got so I've just put it on top just so to get the pile working in the right direction really and then I'm just peeling it back and we, we're going to sew this section here so the bit without the overhang of the fur so that it's in line with the back bottom of the horns so on that back bit just there we're just going to use a, a back stitch Let's just put a pin in just to hold or a couple of pins just to hold it in place for as well as we just get ourselves straight. There we go. And with the horns there, we're just going to do a quick back stitch across the edge just here, and then that's going to get flipped over forward like that so that we can run that. We're going to sew it with the back stitch, quarter of an inch off the raw edge. Um, and then we're going to then slip stitch over the sides and the ends. So I'm going to use the darker thread for this one, the one on the machine. That we'll end up using for the body parts as well to get quite a decent piece because that's a better match I think for the colours. And get a needle and thread so that we can sew this in place. I've got thread everywhere. I went out earlier and I got thread in my hair. The lady in the shop had to tell me to got pink thread in my hair. Anyway. Isn't that a sign of a good sewist, or a true sewist, isn't it, or an enthusiastic sewist when they've got thread everywhere? Okay, so raw edges just together. And then we're going to do a twist, just, just do a three knot, three wrap knot for this one. Okay, so in the instructions it says to do a, um, a back stitch. So let's just start here. And we're just going to do, I'm just going to come out on the edge just for the moment. So I've just put them, I've started in the middle of my stitches here. Um, I've st started not in the middle, but just away from the edge, just so that those ends of that knot and that knot's not ever going to peek out. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches just holding that end in place because we want that end just to be absolutely fixed down just there. Don't get any fur caught up in your seam, in your stitches. And then now I'm just going to do a back stitch. So with the back stitch, we take a stitch forward. And it's gone around his ear. Come on, Hamish, let go of your, that with your ear. Okay. I'm just making sure, is that straight? Might not be totally straight there. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and then we're going to go back in again and then come out further on. So you almost go, you're sewing backwards on yourself. Can you see? So I'm going to go back now. My thread's coming out just here. That's my knot. My thread is actually coming out here as double. And I'm going to go back be towards the right of where my thread's coming out to take another stitch. And you need to make sure that you're going through the fur as well as through the felt underneath as well. So you have to go quite deep to make sure that you've got that. And I'm just pressing down with my thing, thumb onto the felt as well and that will just sort of indent it a little bit so you can get your needle through a little bit easier and take this first pin out now because we've gone past that stage and if you catch any threat fibers of the hair just un, un, untangle those so that you can hold this 
back in place. Try and keep your stitches straight because that will affect how it fits on the, on the front if we're not careful. And all of this should be hidden with the fur when we when we turn it back over. As I say, just, just press down on the head slightly and you just get this nice little run of stitch. It's supposed to be about a quarter of an inch. I'm just going a little bit generous there, so I need to just be careful, otherwise he won't get that wonderful fringe that I want him to have. Because that truly is, I think, one of the best features of him really, isn't it? There we go, just keep going across. We'll give this a good tug in a minute and just see how well I've sewn it on. Don't want his toupee coming off, do we? Okay, and I'm just going to go, just get the fur out of the way at the edge there. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches, just holding that edge on at the end there as well so that I can't lift. Okay. Let's have a little look. So let's keep our thread out of the way. So I lift that over so we can have that little fluff at the back there and that's gonna hide our stitches and where that's all going together. And then bring it forward over here. And then let's see how his fringe. Oh yeah, look, look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Right, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna fold all of this fur because I'm gonna carry on now from down this side of where we are. So I'm folding all the fur, brushing it all the way over to the other side, away from where I'm going to be sewing. And then I'm going to take another stitch through the bottom of the fur. Or oh, did I give it a tug, didn't I? Yeah, no, that's nice and firm. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to pretty much sew this. It's going to almost follow. I wonder if I didn't, if it, this was done by hand, whether it would almost follow the, the side seam along there, look. It almost doesn't. I want to take a big enough bite that we're, go we're going away from any frayed edge that might might happen on this fabric because it's not been neatened down. I don't think it doesn't fray per se and we're just neatening it down and with these little stitches just as we're doing the same ones as we're doing before we're just managing to hide those threads and those stitches in that hair. Wonderful wonderful hair. Now, I do have to say, it's because I know my friend Lindsay might watch this, and she's already said she'd like this Hamish. So I will be ordering another kit because I'd like to have a Hamish as well. So I can then decide whether she has this one or the second one. It depends, but I'll have to wait until June because I'm not back in the UK until June. Oh, sorry, no, my mum's coming over in June, isn't she? So I could always get her to bring a kit with me, with her, when she comes. So, oh, look, it's, all his stuffing's coming out, look. <laughs> I told you I stuffed it well, didn't I? Stuff it a little bit more, right. Okay, so let's just keep this coming forward. I suppose you could tuck the edge under if you wanted to, couldn't you, and then just stitch it. But I think that once the fur's down over the top of there, and if we just pull it out a bit, little bit with our needle... And then it's just, it falls over like that. You're not going to see that edge. You see a little bit of the mesh through there, but there's nothing I can do about that bit. Just, I think you just have to rough it up and then it kind of covers it all. So I'm not worried too much about this edge. I suppose if you wanted to, you could give it a little a bit of a, a trim on the edge and then tuck it under. But to be fair, to be fair it is just getting covered over nicely. So I'm just going to carry on. Sarah doesn't say in the book to turn it over. So when I'm doing these kits, I try and keep the instructions as close to what the um, instructions are in the book. I mean, I know I've machine sewed this one and completely and, and the instructions don't say to do that. But, you know, that's just a little bit of improvisation. Just trying to make sure I get enough of a bite of the fur. Okay, 
coming down towards this edge here. So we need to make sure we've got this even as well, don't we? So that, right, let's put a pin in there just to hold that still. Sorry, Hamish, but we're nearly done. Right, see, that's pulled back on. I've got a little hook there. I haven't pulled that there, so I need to, needs to be pulled down so that it's flat. And I suppose if you didn't want so much of a fringe, you could always trim this back a little bit, couldn't you? Sort of trim the mesh back so that it's not quite so long. And that would work. Just to hold it back for you. So the fringe wasn't quite so so long. It's very, um, was it the Flock of Seagulls, that band in the 80s? Okay, so I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to carry on sewing. And then I can speed this up for you when I edit it. So let me just keep going and I'll see you in a few minutes on the other side. So to finish off the thread, I'm just going to do a through few stitches within the hair and that should give us enough of a, a hold on there. Just a few over and over again. Oh, let's keep that stabbing myself. And then I can bury that thread inside the head. The end. Just by pulling it through and then just by putting a bit of pressure on it, just being careful not to cut any of the fur right so let's have a little look Hamish let's give you a little bit of a, a ruffle there we go just part his hair over his horns so it kind of goes down and hides the stitches that we've done and how sweet is he just adorable so there we go. So there's Hamish's head all finished. I'll just turn the camera around so I can speak to you and then we'll talk about the rest. So I hope you've enjoyed sewing Hamish's head with me. I know it's a little bit tricky in places, especially underneath this muzzle when we're doing these edges here, but hopefully I've shown you that because this muzzle gets hand sewn over the top, then it hides that any, any sort of messiness, if you like, that you've got under there. So with that, hopefully it'll give you the confidence of having a go. Um, and sewing the, with the fur has been much easier than I thought it was. Sorry, I keep faffing with his hair. I just really love him. Okay, so um, yeah, it's just, um, I better get on and make him a body really, hadn't I? I'll get this one edited and I'll get it up, then I'll start on the body. And then at least if you've got the kit, you can start on your head, can't you? You're not waiting for me then. But yeah, thrilled with that. Okay, everybody, have a great day. Thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. There's about 60% of the people who watch my videos who aren't subscribers, and I'd really appreciate it if you do, because then um, Facebook, not Facebook, YouTube will 
um, push my videos out to more people because if you're saying it's good content then they want to then push it out to everybody else and, and I just really appreciate that. So I'll carry on now get him edited so that we've got his head done. Bless him. Um, and then we're going to then um, do his body. Have a great day everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.